Welcome everybody to another VAC Tech Talk. In this session, we're gonna be addressing uh, gearboxes, specifically Drenth sequential gearboxes, which are pretty popular in road racing and drifting, hill climbs, rally, and different motorsport applications. Um, basically, you know, as a quick intro to Drenth, if you're not familiar with them, Drenth has been in business for about 40 years plus. Johan Drenth is the founder of Drenth Motorsport Gearboxes and they're located in Enter, Netherlands. Um, the reason we are working with Drenth and the reason why we are exclusive to Drenth and we are the exclusive importers for Drenth in North America is because of a, a long relationship and, and the rich history they have and the successful history. As you all know, we like to basically uh, sell products that we know work and, and that can also basically provide a nice added value. So uh, what we have on display are three different gearboxes. You have the DG400, which is a nice size box. It's for like E30 M3s and anything in that range, 2.5 liter, four cylinders. It can actually also work on six cylinder applications um, there's a DG350 we're not displaying. Um, over here is an H pattern gearbox. So this, with these castings, this is designed to be the Getrag like 265 replacement for the E30 M3. Um, they've gone on to make their own castings since those bell houses, since those uh, OE cases are very difficult to come by these days. The gear kit that is made for this gearbox is actually designed to fit in the original Getrag transmission. But it's gotta be the dog-like the dog -like version. And so those are pretty pricey these days. And so Drenth figured, okay, availability issue, price issue, we'll do our own castings. And, and that's what this is for. The uh, featured, we're gonna call it the featured gearbox because this is most of the inline gearboxes that are sold are this gearbox, the DG500. DG500 will support very nice horsepower for the S54 engines, whether you're stock or making 500 horsepower, it's not a problem. The other reason why people lean towards this and why I prefer this gearbox is because if you ever decide to uh, change engines and go to uh, like an S65, you know, V8 power, this gearbox will still work with the V8 power. So for instance, um, in Jack Haberman's uh, orange wide body car, um, that particular car ran the DG500 with the S54, and then when he decided he wanted an LS swap in there, this way he could have some added torque for endurance, the same gearbox, different bell housing, different clutch and flywheel, and same gearbox. So this gearbox is typically, you know, what we tell people, I mean, it's probably a hundred hour gearbox between inspections. Um, basically they all are, you know, if, if, they're, if they're fit for the application, if you're using it in the proper application, if the installation is done properly, if the shifting is done properly, ignition cuts happen, if you're using auto blip, if everything is working right, you have beautiful life out of these gearboxes. Um, so in addition to the gearboxes here today, we're also showing some clutches. We've been a Tilton distributor since the late 90s when I was running a tube frame uh, car in GT3 SCCA. Back then I would brand different clutches and just never had any success. It was like all the DNFs or DNSs were typically caused by drivetrain, you know, by the clutch specifically and not by the engines. So I uh, reached out to Tilton. They didn't make a flywheel for the BMWs at that time. So we made the flywheel and we started with pretty much this clutch kit here, which is the five and a half inch. So we started with the five and a half inch twin disc and really never looked back. So for, for flywheels, we have the Clutch Masters 
This is a, a step up from stock, but this is basically a stock application. You can see the diameter. They make them with a, a rigid center disc without these springs here. These are dampening springs for when you let go of the clutch. They also do a, uh, a heavy duty strap, additional straps in here. A common problem that happens with standard clutches or that on bad downshifts, this pressure plate section here wants to rotate against these tabs or tangs or straps. And when it does, it bends these. And if one bends more than the other, this pressure plate is no longer concentric. And then you develop a vibration. This is very common. We've seen this so many times in BMW applications where these can bend a little bit. Now the original ones bend much easier than these, but these can still potentially bend. These are designed to be in tension, pulling the strap. They'll never fail that way. The only failure happens is when it goes the reverse direction and these straps bend, okay? Um, these clutches are very nice clutches for uh, street use, for factory gearboxes, but they're not really recommended and you're not going to get the most out of your gearbox when you're running a factory style clutch full-size clutch you want to reduce the mass and you want to reduce the moment of inertia as well so the smaller the diameter the less the moment of inertia and what we like to do is go five and a half inch to get the best out of it but if somebody says ah you know i want to do some i want better drivability or I want my clutches to last longer or whatever, we can step up to a seven and a quarter inch. The tilt and seven and a quarter inches are available in a race style disc, which is a hundred thousandths basically here. And this is the paddle type. And then they have the full round, which is more like this style here, but in the five and a half. The seven and a quarter is available this is again you look at it and this is pretty much the same thickness so this is the race disc what we don't have on display is the sarah metallic the sarah metallic is about twice as thick these are 100 i believe the sarah metallic is either 200 or 250 thousandths thick on on the disc which gives you a lot more um, material for wear that one used to be called the rally clutch back in the day. So now they just refer to it as a Sarah metallic clutch. So rally, hill climb, occasional street use, applications like that, we like the Sarah metallic. Drifting, um, the, the more material also allows for, for more heat dissipation. So typically, um, if you're concerned about heat, you're distributing the heat through more discs, your clutch is gonna live longer. If you have life concerns and you know, you're running a two disc on a five and a half and you want it to live longer, you go to a three disc and you'll get more life. You're distributing the heat across six surfaces instead of just two surfaces on each disc. Not sure how much we wanna go into this, but there's one more item on display. And this is what we call a hydraulic release bearing. So your normal, Clutches, they have a, a throw out bearing or a release bearing that sits on clutch fork that pivots and then applies the force. With these guys, these are 100% direct acting. So these replace your slave cylinder and your release bearing. So this is the bearing part of it here. And then this right here is the slave cylinder side you can see the hydraulics will hydraulic fluid will go in one side we typically make our adapter plates to locate the other at 12 o'clock for bleeding the air out but this becomes your release bearing this becomes everything and then it's direct acting 100 percent perpendicular and it basically is going to sit kind of like like that so the forces are direct acting they're perpendicular they're you, if you're twisted, you will have problems, but it's pretty much impossible unless you've made adapter plates that are not parallel. So everything being done properly, this is the way to go. Um, these are available in three diameters. They're available in the 38, 
in the 44 millimeter and in a 52 millimeter. Um, typically the 52 becomes usable and then they're also available. Let me just add, there's a rounded face over here. So let's, let's just add a little something here of value. When you have diaphragm springs that are flat, then the bearing surface needs to have a radius on it. And then when you have diaphragm springs that have this radius on it here, then we use a flat bearing, which this isn't, but it becomes a flat face bearing. So when you have radius here, flat face bearing, when you have a flat diaphragm spring, you need a radius on the bearing itself. So that's uh, something that you should not overlook. So these are the, the clutch products um, of, of choice to work with the sequentials. So how can I give you some more added value out of this presentation? Um, Non-BMW, BMW applications, there's a, the DG400, they make that in an HD version. There's a DG450 that's not on display, that's going to be redesigned, that's not as popular. The DG500, which is, uh, I'm not sure if we can capture here, the shape of it is a little bit more triangular, so the way the shafts are located in there and everything, it makes more of a, a compact package. You can see, you can see it's actually shorter than the 400. So in order to, the shaft centers on this box are bigger, but because it's kind of laid down a little bit, you can get better fitment into the chassis. Um, there's, any of these sequentials can be shifted uh, with the paddle, if you like. Typically the initial install, most people do it with a lever type. Drenth makes their own levers, and the levers do have a sensor for ignition cut. Um, same sensor will actually send a signal to blip the throttle on downshift. So typically, any cars that we have set up, we have set up for flat shifting, so you're wide open throttle, you never lift, and then you're shifting. When you go to downshift, you're on the brakes, and then you don't have to roll over your foot anymore to blip the throttle. As soon as you pull the shifter for a downshift, or push the shifter for a downshift, sends the signal, and it does the auto blip, everything's programmed right, you get a nice smooth shift. That gives the, uh, the teeth, the dog teeth, the best life inside the gearbox. Um, Drent does not make any synchronized gears. All their gears are dog tooth gears. So uh, all the gears are also a straight cut spur type gear. And so they are a little bit louder. They are designed for racing and performance. They're not really designed for street. You can use them in the street but you're obviously gonna have you know, a wine that you wouldn't normally have. They are very, very quiet you know, for, the, for the type of gearbox that they are. And that's because of the manufacturing quality of the gears. The finish that they put on the gears, the way they grind them is, is basically second to none. Um, I mean, what else can I say about these gearboxes without making it sound like it's, it's biased? So I think, I think really, to, to give a fair evaluation, there are other manufacturers out there. We do, we do offer Quaife, um, you know, you have Dren, you have Extract, which is probably the, the cream of the crop or probably the most known, very high end. You have Hollinger, so there's, there's quite a few out there. Um, based on what we have done and what we have seen, is that you get a very good value from Dren. We probably have you know, um, so many racers out there that are willing to vouch for the quality. They ran something other than Drent. When they changed the Drent, they were extremely happy. You got durability, you got reliability, and when we need parts for service, Drent has them in stock. What we typically try to do is you give us a parts order, we get the parts order over to Drent, they quote everything, they give us the current shipping for that particular package, and then we do all the paperwork and everything is processed as door to door. So it, it, the parts will go from the Netherlands to their destination in the US. And in most cases, you know, we have to, to leave margin for error with, with customs and, 
in FedEx, but barring any issues, most people will have their package in about three days. That's from Europe. So I think we have that uh, pretty, pretty sorted. Um, so for a little additional technical information, but one of the gearboxes that's not here is the, is the MPG. The MPG is a five-speed gearbox. That gearbox is also used in a Corvette setup. Now the five-speed, you know, when you have a broader torque band, you don't really just need a thousand RPM drop. So you can usually accomplish the goals with a, a good five-speed. But by keeping it at the five-speed, they can keep it compact and the gears have to be wider to handle the additional torque. And that's why, you know, gear boxes will grow in size is to handle the torque. Really, it's torque we're concerned about, not just the horsepower. You could make 1,200 horsepower and not have a lot of torque. And, you know, flip that around, torque breaks everything. So, um, MPG is the next gearbox up from, from this setup, from the DG500. Um, and I guess what I will say is, let me, let, let's talk about something here briefly. We're filming this just before the PRI show, Performance Racing Industry Show in Indianapolis, which is on the 7th, 8th, 9th of December. So we're, we're shooting this basically a, a week before. So we will get this information out to you, but Drenth, Johan Drenth from Drenth will be at the booth with us. We are, we are booth number 1743 in the Green Hall. If you want to visit, uh, meet Johan, meet our sales staff, see a bigger display of gearboxes in person, ask all the technical questions you have, any issues you may have, you know, we're, we're there to put new, uh, put the face with the name, we're there to see old faces, if they're smiling or if they're not. If they're not, we want to see you too, we want to hear about it, you know, we're, we're not, we don't claim we're perfect but we will absolutely address anything and everything in the marketplace. So uh, with that being too long-winded on, uh, on this particular video, I think we've probably covered enough on, you know, regarding these gearboxes. To see them in person, you'll see a bigger assortment, PRI 2023 in Indianapolis. Um, flywheels clutches will be there, Tilton will display uh, as well over there. Um, so we can, uh, we can always take you over and you can see a big Tilton assortment. We are a major distributor for Tilton. Other than flywheels and clutches, we do also offer brake pedal kits and masters and so forth. So um, let's see here. I think I can talk about one more thing about, about flanges here. Let's, let's talk about this. So this, this setup here is a direct, all these gearboxes have direct replacement for BMW. On the MPG, you can get a fixed flange like this to where you use the Guibo or the flex disc, or, or they can do it in a, in a slip version. This year at the PRI show, we should have, if FedEx doesn't cause us any pain, we should have a direct bolt-in for the GT86, FT86, the BRZ Toyota setup. That's gonna be direct replacement setup. So that will be on display at the PRI show, barring any hiccups with customs and, and uh, FedEx. So, uh, we're looking forward to seeing you guys, if somebody can make it there. If not, hopefully whatever we've presented here is good information for you. Um, feel free to call, ask, message, email, comment, and uh, we'll take care of it. Appreciate you guys, and we look forward to seeing you at PRI or with the next video. Take care, guys.